I'm calling this one now before I even start putting the video together. This will be the shortest video out of all my map detailings. The Iron Islands is the smallest region with the second smallest population after Dorne. While the map doesn't show it, there is actually 31 islands in Iron Man's Bay. But there is also a second group of 14 islands a little further west. The majority of these islands are just essentially large rocks and it's said that it would only take a day to walk across each island. Located off the western coast of Westeros, and every kingdom that lies on the western coast has felt the pain of the ironborn raids. From the north to the Riverlands, Westerlands, and the Reach, these lands have had to fend off their barbaric attacks. The weather in these parts are harsh and it's very difficult to grow crops with the weak soil they have. All they have is mines with lesser metals like iron and tin. So instead of getting the hell out of here, the people depend on raiding others in more fortunate places. The Ironborn have been pretty good at making longships over the years for the purpose of raiding. The harsh living conditions and abundant amount of iron earned them the name Ironborn. All the Iron Islands in this archipelago are ruled by House Greyjoy on Pike. Pike is the name of the island, but also their castle. It's a pretty unique castle considering the towers are located on smaller islands and connected by rope bridges. It used to be on the actual main island of Pike, but over time the land eroded, creating these smaller islands. The Greyjoys and their castle aren't the only thing on this island, however. There's a port town called Lord's Port, ruled by House Botley, on the opposite side of the island. It's the biggest town in all of the Iron Islands, and is where the ships anchor since the seas around the castle Pike are way too dangerous. At the northern coast is another town called Iron Holt, ruled by House Wench. The Greyjoys may rule all the Ironborn from Pike now, but it wasn't always this way. Each island would have two kings, a rock king and a salt king. While the rock king ruled on the land, the salt king ruled from his ship on the seas. Eventually, all the kings and sea captains would come together and decide that one king should rule them all. In a tradition called the King's Moot, any sea captain can put his name in for the election on the island called Old Wick. The Ironborn follow their religion of the Drowned God, which is a topic on its own, but Old Wick is a holy place to these people. On the shore of this island, a legendary figure called the Grey King allegedly killed the sea dragon Naga. The houses here all claim descent from the Grey King. The bones of the sea dragon Naga were turned into stone by the Drowned God and made into the Grey King's Hall. Where the stone pillars rose from the ground on Naga's hill would be where the King's Moot would take place on Old Wick. The Ironborn are very comparable to the Wildlings, so it's pretty ironic they were civilized enough to hold a vote to decide who should rule them all. Old Wick is also where the first men who settled here thousands of years ago in the past found something called the Sea Stone Chair. Who made it and where it came from is a mystery since it was on the shores of Old Wick before the first men and they are believed to be the first to settle on the Iron Islands. The Sea Stone Chair is made from this oily black stone found all over this world and carved into the shape of a kraken. The kings made this into their throne. The small island is the first settled by the first men. It's now ruled by House Drum who call themselves the Lords of Old Wick. That little bay of water that separates Old Wick and Great Wick is called Naga's Cradle. It's the largest island in the archipelago and a lot of houses have their castles here. There's House Good Brother who's powerful enough to have five branch families with their own seats. House Merlin of Pebbleton, House Spar, and House Farwind of Sealskin Point. I'll talk a bit more about the Farwinds later on because a lot of houses on the Iron Islands branch off. So far, there hasn't been anything written about if one of these families outrank each other on Great Wick. Out east is Harlaw, and it may only be the second largest island, but it is the wealthiest. The Iron Islands aren't fertile enough to have much green life, but Harlaw did have forests. The people here got a little too excited and cut them down to make a bunch of longships. These forests must have attracted a lot of the Ironborn because Harlaw is the most populated island. House Harlaw rule over all the other houses on the island with the same name. There are five branch families in this powerful house and four other houses on the island. There's House Kenning, Volmark, Stone Tree, and Mir. Theon and his sibling's mom is a lady from House Harlaw. Orkmont is an island that also once had forests, but greed took that away from them. Now it's just a mountainous chunk of land. What Orkmont is most known for is this is where the extinct houses Great Iron and Hor originated from. The Great Irons had enough of the king's moot and made the succession of the thrones hereditary. House Hor would later rise up and take the throne from them many years later. House Hor would become powerful enough to take the Riverlands and become the kings of the Isles and Rivers. They built the largest castle in all of Westeros, Harrenhal, in the Riverlands for their family, for it to only be destroyed by Aegon the Conqueror's dragon the day its construction was complete. With these two houses extinct, House Orkwood and Tawny rule on the island. 
One of the Good Brother branches is also on Orkma. The last two of the main islands haven't been very interesting so far in the series. The southernmost island is Salt Cliff. All we know about it is two of the houses are the Salt Cliffs and the Sunderlies. Black Tide up north isn't any better. House Black Tide rules over there. On the second group of islands further west, the only island named is Lonely Light. It's also the only inhabited one out of these 14 islands. This is the westernmost location in this world. It's a secluded place that takes 8 days to sail to from Great Wick. If the Ironborn are outcasts, the inhabitants of Lonely Island are the outcasts of outcasts. They're looked at as a strange group of people, believed to be able to skin change into sea lions and walruses, with some rumors going as far as to say the people mate with seals to create half-human creatures. This tiny island is ruled by a branch family of House Farwind. The main family is way back at Great Wick if you remember me discussing them earlier. Sailing further west from this point in the Sunset Sea is a death wish. Many who sail out there never return, and the ones that do claim there's nothing but sea. In the current story, however, Lord Gilbert Farwind of the Lonely Light says there is land out there and that he can lead the Ironborn to where every man and woman can rule as kings and queens. It's too bad no one takes him seriously and will never travel that far in the story. So those are the sad and depressing 8 main locations of the Iron Islands. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. The last 3 kingdoms will be coming up in the next couple weeks for those who care. Thanks for watching guys.